on the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Talking Catholic. I am Jennifer Morrow, and with me, as always, is the man, the mystery, Mike Walsh. Wow, that is so uh, energetic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for We're recording this at uh, 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning, and I am well known for not being energetic, nor ever allowing any of the things to occur in the morning that requires my attention. Mm-hmm. But... So, but we're here anyway because I'm excited. It's a good, it's a good podcast. It's something I want to talk about all the time. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about it. What do you want to talk about all the time? I want to talk about when we when, when we introduce our guests soon. Okay. It's a, one of my favorite events and uh, one of my favorite people. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm particularly looking forward to you pronouncing his last name because uh-huh. it creates such consternation on you because uh, he. I will say he does have a very difficult name to, to pronounce. I I messed it up for a, a good solid year before I learned the trick of how to pronounce it. Oh, that makes me feel a little better yeah. since it's only been, what, eight yeah, months? Exactly. Yeah, I've been so. Yeah. I still have a couple more months. Oh, to, my goodness, yes. I don't know. I was pretty proud that I said it this morning uh, correct first yeah. time right mm-hmm. out the gate, but mm-hmm. I know I won't now because yeah, we're re- recording. I'm really looking forward to it. So <laughs> so how are you today, Mike? <laughs> I've got two <laughs> cups of coffee, so that's probably the extra pep in my step you see this morning. Uh, I have um, given up going to Wawa in the morning and drinking vast quantities of Diet Pepsi. Uh, I've not because I've given up vast quantities of Diet Pepsi. I've just sort of changed my the way I handle my mornings now. Oh. And I find that I'm drinking less Diet Pepsi, which is the only caffeine I get in the day. And um, so I don't know what this podcast is going to sound like today. So, you know, to our listeners, good luck. I thought you were attempting to light coffee. I am attempting to light coffee, but I'm not necessarily to the point yet where I can drink it at all times of the day and night and it's still the weirdest thing in the world to, for me to, to try but yeah. well you shouldn't drink it at night you know i've been told that yeah probably shouldn't do that so i we should also tell people that uh we're now this is probably the second uh recording in the vault that we've done in i don't know a year or so but it's the first one i think we've done with a guest with us in the vault that is actually true when yeah. i walked in today i was surprised we were in the vault well, um, with a guest, and I was excited about that. The, the New Jersey and the CDC says that uh, life is back to normal again, so I decided that so should be our recording in the vault. So we have a guest with us today, and we're closed in. We're behind the bank vault. It's it's delightful. It is. It's, it's almost like feeling. I, actually, our guest and I were talking before uh, you came in the room. With, uh, that I'm actually having a hard time. Or rather, trying to retrain my brain to think about what life was like or what I would do in my life pre-pandemic. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I know it sounds bizarre, but going out and seeing friends and doing things and being a part of things, uh, you know, going to a movie, I realized that that shouldn't feel like a... You know, a special. Yeah, I was going to say, like something special or something foreign. Right. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was at a early uh, St. Patrick's Day parade over the weekend with some friends and mm-hmm. I was completely like sh- not sure if I should even be there or if it was out you know it was outside inside mask no mask I did both but and also it was just the first time I'd seen those friends in over a year yeah. and um, it felt great I'm gonna say but it was a little odd I wasn't yeah. sure and I don't know but it was a great time and I'm glad I went I, I'm telling you this to our listeners it is human nature you, you may you, now a lot of people probably don't have this at all but I suffer from, uh, I, I think I've talked about it on the podcast before, I am an anxiety sufferer. I have I have strong issues with anxiety, which is one of the reasons I'm an introvert, which I know no one ever believes. No one believes I have anxiety either, but it's true. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, one of these things is, you know, when you've, are, you've spent the last two years training your brain in a certain fashion, and then you suddenly realize you don't have to worry about that stuff for the most part anymore, it, it actually takes a little bit of effort to kind of retrain your brain to think normally again. So Definitely. And I say that to say this, in the, the Catholic Star Herald, latest edition of the Catholic Star Herald has come out, and it's a beautiful edition, but uh, we're, we're reporting on stuff this week, and we were kind of having a discussion on like what we should cover that's going on, and there are a number of parishes doing things and I was like, you know what? I don't care how small of a turnout it is or or how like what level of presentation it is. I want us to go out and cover it because I want to number one show people 
that life is getting back to normal. Number two, that there are these great options in their churches and yep. their parishes, and that we, as the Catholic Star Herald, really want to like that that. For, for most of this Catholic Star Herald's history, that was its bread and butter, was right. going out and covering things. Right. So everybody, let us know what's going on in your area, because we want to go out and cover it so that everybody knows to go out and enjoy your activity. Get back in the parishes. It's Yeah. It's fun. It's safe. I'll tell you what I was surprised about. What I, Like I said, I'm going to say this twice on the one show. I've been here, what, around eight months? Mm-hmm. And... Ash Wednesday at the cathedral. That was the first time I'd seen the cathedral completely full because yeah. I haven't really been here since the COVID. The COVID. The COVID. So to see it completely full, people were happy. I think just to be sitting, you know, with you know each other and friends and family. And I loved seeing the cathedral full. And just a few days before that, it was full for the uh, the Tolton yeah. uh, presentation. Uh, on Monday evening. So mm-hmm. it, people are moving back out there. Well, they're moving back out there. It makes me very happy to see. But for those of you who might have been dragging your feet or thinking that, you know, your, your brains aren't quite ready for it yet. And let me tell you, you know, let me encourage you to uh, to make those first steps back into the normal life and, and enjoy your lives and go see your family and go see your friends and invite your friends over to the house and go get drinks and whatever you can do. Drink coffee if you want to or, or Diet Pepsi. Or uh, Irish coffee as well. Oh, even better. <laughs> there you go. So speaking about Lent and Ash Wednesday for a second, Wait, I have I, to... Oh, what? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me about the cake I made. Oh, do you want me to ask you that? Nah, it's all right. Well, we were talking about Irish drinking, and I was like, I made this I made this beautiful Irish whiskey cake. Yeah. And uh, I have to tell you something. You didn't realize that whiskey could be put into a cake, but I put it into every element of the cake, and it was delicious. It was delicious. Anyway. It, why don't you tell? It was like this, like buttercream cake part with like green filling that had a little Irish whiskey in it, right? Yeah, and a, and a glaze on top that had Irish whiskey in it. And, it. and the thing was, it was delicious. It was. It was really, really good. Uh, oh, which actually leads to another thing. I know you're going to talk about it in something in a second. Okay. But I would just want to go back to something else that was in the Star Herald last week, which was we got incredible response to. You started a clergy kitchen series where we're including uh, recipes from some of our clergy. Well, Father Manapella put, put this great oh <laughs> this great recipe um, that essentially was replacing meatballs with sort of a, a fried cheese ball, ricotta, basically. Ricotta, I think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, ricotta cheese ball. And the people went nuts for it. The, they, it, it, I, the first thing I did was rip it out of the paper when I got home and make sure it was <laughs> saved so that I can make that some Sunday or some Friday in Lent. No, actually, could you make it on maybe Thursday night for Friday and bring it to the office? Because okay. our staff photographer, Dave Hernandez, went and took photos. Father, it was very nice to, to have him into the kitchen to take some photos. And he got to try the meal. Mm-hmm. And he said it was amazing. And I, I know that no matter how hard I try to cook that, it's not going to come out like that. So you being a good cook, could you just sure. bring it to the office? Not a problem. Super. I'm more than happy to do that. Good. I All would right. like that. What were you going to say before yeah. I cut you off? Oh, I was going to go back to Ash Wednesday. Mm. And I was just going to give you a shout out and say thank you because you were super uh, multitasking that day. Um, oh. And you took photos and video for the Catholic Star Herald. <laughs> yes, I heard. And I know it was very... You know, a lot of work. I just want to say thanks. Oh, well, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Uh, I, I truly love um, going to these events, uh, you know, taking pictures, live streaming when necessary. Uh, our own staff photographer had taken ill that day. So I had only planned on uh, doing uh, some videography. And then uh, it, it was a... Uh, Hey, Mike, can you t- do the live stream and photograph? And uh, for the most part, like, there's a team of us that do, do, does the live streams that we can usually, uh, you know, it's usually not an issue. But in <laughs> for Ash Wednesday, you kind of have to really get up there and, and get some live shots of the uh, clergy putting on the ashes and on people's heads. And uh, the only way to do that was with my cell phone in one hand doing the live stream and the camera in my right hand taking photographs. And I was happy to see that one of those photographs made it up on the uh, f- front page of the Catholic Star Herald that had been taken while I was simultaneously live streaming. So if you ever wondered if it's possible to multitask, <laughs> it is. I was impressed. Uh, I'm impressed. I was sitting, you know, listening to the homily, watching you do it. And I said, that looks stressful. Thank goodness he, nobody asked me to do that. <laughs> Good thing I asked somebody else to do it. <laughs> it is a little stressful. I will tell you, that was not the first time that's ever happened. I'm, I'm actually, sure. I had actually done that one time prior. But, uh, but anyway... 
So we have a big event coming up in the Diocese of Camden. Um, it should have been the 12th annual. Uh, it is currently the because of a two-year hiatus, I guess you could call it the 10th iteration of <laughs> iRace for Vocations, okay. which is, Jen, you have never been a part of it before. I've not, and I'm super excited to go. Uh, me too. Uh, it's one, it is one of the top three favorite events in the diocese. It is a mass, and I love it because it is, the Catholic Church is put on display for a good solid day in a very public park. It's been in a couple different parks in, in South Jersey, but it's a, um, a very public park and everybody who comes to that park that day will see a thousand Catholics out there having an outdoor mass, sitting on lawn chairs, seeing the bishop, and then having fun and revelry and food. And then at one point there's a 5K run which actually, you know, we should make mention that if, if you're a regular 5K runner, it is an approved 5K run that goes to whatever your stats are for that. There's also a one mile family walk for people like myself. And who, me as well. Who shan't be running in a 5K. Um, <laughs> and then prizes and all sorts of other stuff. So it's a great event. And we wanted to do a little promotion of it since it was on hiatus for two years, thanks to COVID. So we decided to bring in one of our favorite guests. Uh, the vocations director for the Diocese of Camden, who essentially uh, runs the thing. So who's with us, Jen? It's Father Adam Chehesky. Yes, and you said his name right. Very congratulations. Thank you. For hi, those, hi, Father Adam. <laughs> Good morning. So thank you for for having me again. So I'm always impressed when I hear I'm one of the favorite guests here. So it's true. It's, it is true. It is. That, true. That's absolutely true. As a matter of fact, I, I should uh, apologize. There was supposed to be another guest with us today, uh, John Kalitz, who has been uh, was one of the uh, creators of iRace and a member of my staff. Um, uh, I'm, Unfortunately for us, but fortunately for him, he's getting a well-deserved day off. So uh, oh. he, was, he had to miss the pot. I know. So that's why it's just you, Father Adam. Sorry. Either that or he's messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> He'll show up any minute. He just like pops in. Seems it, like a drunk. I thought he was. had a day off on Monday. Was... Uh, he, he, uh, he, he works hard, Father. He works hard. <laughs> and if he needs multiple days off, he oh, gets man. it. It must be nice. He... <laughs> Listen, I got news for you. He worked so hard during COVID, particularly during that first year of COVID. Uh, we made that guy, and he didn't have the usual excuse because he's a hockey dad. Yeah. He usually mm -hmm. gets out of like nights and weekend work because he's got to coach his son's hockey team or something like that. Well, hockey was shut down for a year, and I worked him to death. No, that's the truth because I, I was part of that for our first oh, Thursdays yeah. and oh yeah, uh, a couple of the. Uh, the, the interviews we had with the seminarians and mm -hmm. things when when we were all on lockdown. So yeah, no, he definitely works hard. But oh yeah, he's a hard worker. So he's, he, uh, he gets he, the day off. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. just one. Yeah, I think we should mention that Father Adam Jaheski is director of vocations for the Diocese of Camden. That is correct. Squeeze that in there before we start yep. more jocularity. That's right. <laughs> Which will happen on this podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Father Adam, you've been you've had the job now for what? Two years, three years? Three, going on three years. So wow. when I came in, it was six months later that the world shut down. So I don't know if that was a sign of my my, my luck or my presence. But um, And so this, this will be actually my first I race as vocation director. Oh, um, so congrats. It's been a two-year hiatus, so hopefully it, it comes back. Because uh, before we went on hiatus, it was it was a big event. So we were drawing about 700 to 1,000 people um, and this year. We're hoping the same. We're in a new location, too, which doesn't always play to that. But um, we're looking forward to being at uh, Cooper River Park mm -hmm. uh, this year. So we've been we received a lot of help from the, the park there and we're excited about being there. So explain a little bit for those who don't know exactly what iRace is. So Mike said uh, what's going to happen there. We'll have mass and the running, walking, fun, a band, free T-shirts. Free T-shirts or yeah. just T-shirts? If you register, there's a free T-shirt. Uh, if you volunteer, you get a special T-shirt. If, uh, if you're partaking, you get the other T-shirt. And I will tell you, I forget if I mentioned this on the podcast recently or I was talking to other people, um, they are the best T-shirts. They last for forever. They are incredibly comforty, <laughs> f f comfortable. John Kalitz, I don't know who he steals these things from, but they are <laughs> high-quality T-shirts that always have a great design on them because so, I still use mine all the time. Yeah, me too. I have ones that say seminary still on the back that still have lasted and haven't frayed or anything. Nice. So it's uh, well, well, 
It, actually, that's, that brings up an interesting point is that you are, you, so you said this is going to be your first iRace, but it's not really your first iRace. You are actually one of the main benefactors, uh, not, well, uh, benefitees of, of iRace. Which goes back into saying what actually is iRace. Okay. That's right. So it started, uh, I believe it was right after Father Romano had taken over. So 2011, they started the plan, and I think it was 2012. So I was just in my. Uh, first year of theology, I think, or going into my first year of theology as a seminarian. So it was something, again, that uh, John Kalitz, uh, Father Mike Romano, Claire McNamee, and uh, Father um, Bob Hughes were uh, a big part of, of founding um, because it started as a really parish event for a Holy Family parish. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a way of, of being a, a faith raiser, more of a fundraiser. And that's what we always see it as, as is some a way of helping to increase the prayers for vocation. So instead of, you know, for most 5Ks or for most uh, charity 5Ks, you get someone to sponsor you, you know, so many dollars a kilometer. Um, But for us, we have so many prayers per kilometer or a mile. You know, what are the the things that we can offer up, the things that we can pray, all for the hope of increasing vocations. And uh, so it's a great event where we focus just on vocations um, to the priesthood and religious life, um, but showing also how it's, not just the work of one person, but the work of a whole diocese and creating that kind of culture of vocations and um, encouraging young men to think about uh, vocation to the priesthood and young men and women to think about vocations to the religious life and that it's really a group effort. It's not just on one person, but on all of us together. Um, so it's a, a great event that is free. And, uh, you know, signing up, you do get to get a, a free T-shirt. And if you volunteer, uh, a free T-shirt with volunteer on the back. <laughs> I usually this different color. And if you're a seminarian, you also get a different T-shirt right. as well. Right. Um so they stand out, and that's, again, an opportunity for the men to see the great support that our diocese gives to them, um, and it's a, a great example of just the love and the support that I experienced as a seminarian, but that they get to experience now, too, and for a couple of them, it's their first time. Uh, by the way, I should also, we, we probably should have said much earlier than this, that uh, the iRace for Vocations is, is taking place uh, at Cooper River Park, but it's taking place on Sunday, April 3rd. Uh, I believe Mass, I think registration starts at noon, I think the Mass is at 1, and then the 5K and other stuff uh, follows that. Um, at Cooper River Park is this beautiful park in Pensac. It's actually famous. There's, uh, they have a number of sporting events that occur there, including crew and whatnot. It's a great place to go to. Um, and if you want to sign up and register, you should go to camdenpriest.org, right? And you can follow on all of our social media. I think on Instagram, it's Camden Priest. On Twitter, it's Camden Priest. And on Facebook, it's iRace for Vocations, if you want to learn more about that. Yeah, so it's a great thing to check out and to look into. And it is a fun day. And it's one that I've really seen grow as a seminarian to where I am now. And hopefully, I continue that tradition of growing it and helping it to, to be such a successful event. I was thinking about what, when you were just talking, when you were saying it, it's good to to get to know the priests and seminarians as a family. Did you, is that something you experienced when you were a seminarian and hadn't, were taking part for the first year or two? Yeah, it was a, a great event where you got to meet a lot of people and uh, with the seminarian on your back, they know exactly uh, who you are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people are, are so good in, in coming up and talking and just finding out more. Um, and as someone who's also shy, which people uh, have a hard time of, of mm-hmm. believing, and that's really a, a tribute to, I think, the seminary formation. But at that time, too, it's, a, you know, people pulling you out of that, you know, of seeing um, a different side. And that's, that was a great gift um, from, I think, the race where you were kind of put on display, but not in that sense. But mm-hmm. you're, you're out there as that public person and you're out there encouraging, um, but also helping others to discern their own vocation, helping others on their journey to kind of show them the way at times. So if people have questions, is it okay to ask the seminarians, like what's seminarian like or life like and things like that? Yeah, definitely. And that's why we, you know, they're, they're always our, our best um, representatives because they're going through the process. So if somebody comes up and says, you know, I've been thinking about it, but, you know, I don't think I can handle the studies or, you know, I always wanted to be married or I always have this attraction, you know, um, and they encounter those same struggles with the seminarians where the seminarian might say, you know, I had the same doubts about my capabilities of doing the schoolwork or doing the the prayer life because it is, you know, at times very rigorous and just something, again, that, that forms you. And that can be very daunting for people to see and um, to see the, the hope, you know, and see the possibility. And that's what I always said. If I could do it, anybody could do it, you know, as long as you work hard for it and, and really put your mind to it. 
um, and trust and that, you know, they're, they're good representatives of that. And we have such good men uh, in our, our formation program that they're always willing to talk, always willing to share and uh, always willing to kind of walk with other people that are thinking about it. And the iRace is a great time if you've never met our seminarians to come out uh, on April 3rd and just to see, again, the work that goes into it, but also to see the, the great men and the, the great future um, fathers that we'll have in our diocese. And that's just a, a great blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, this year we're, it's a, we're a, it's a very blessed year this year in the Diocese of Camden in the sense that um, we, God willing, are ordaining five new men to the priesthood uh, this year. Uh, very, very excited about that. It's the largest gra- uh, ordination class in the time I've been here. Um, and uh, I can't, actually, I was talking to people <laughs> about it yesterday. And, and with, with a class at large, it, it comes with a few hurdles we have to jump. You know, everybody's first mass will be the following day. So making sure they're represented and get people there. And Bishop usually goes to every first mass. I can't believe he's going to be, be able to make it this year with five of them going on. But it's a big deal. And, um, and I think a lot of that has to has to be attributed to the power of iRace and the dedication on the part of our parishes to encourage yeah. vocations to the priesthood. It's a very diverse group who's being ordained this year. A uh, ton of characters uh, in, in that group. <laughs> and, I, and I say that with, with, with joy in my heart. They are all, they are all very unique individuals, um, but which I think is, is good for the priesthood. And it's another reminder that, uh, you know, God calls all people. Or, or a wide variety of people to the to the priesthood, mm-hmm. you know. As somebody newish <clears throat> to the to the diocese, I'm looking forward to going on April 3rd. Um, first off, just to see how many people coming together, like we were talking about just now, that idea of PTSD and not getting out. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to get out onto, and be outside with the park. But I'm also getting. I'm really want to meet the seminarians and you know some of the priests that. The, 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 the seminarians will be, will be serving in these churches because um, I, I really just want to meet them before ordination as well as to say, you know, thank you, congratulations, and, and just start to get to know them. It, it does have a very family feel to it. Like, yeah. I, I know in uh, some years, I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year, in some years, uh, but non diocesan seminarians, un, not, are none from our diocese, anyway, will often come down and help in racing the 5K and partake in the Mass. Oh, that's great. Yeah, do you know if that's going to happen this year? No, because, uh, well, oh, actually, yeah, there, there was a conflict in one of the, the seminaries, so we're kind of still working that through, so pray <laughs> all that oh, goes no. through. Um, but usually the, the college seminary would come down, and that was before when everything was normal. Um, but now with everything, we were kind of not sure what it was going to look like. You know, when we got to January, we had started planning back in October, kind of getting things set of where we were going to go. We were looking at different places. Um, so once we started getting things set and then the, the spike started happening again, we were kind of like holding our breath to say, is this really going to happen again? Is, you know, is this going to be another year where we have to cancel? Um, so we're, we're very happy just to have it back there. And we're hoping that the people that we had in the past will will come back and we just had an on-site actually and it was funny so i'm there with uh, claire and john and uh, we're getting kind of the the layout of where things are going to be we're kind of putting things together and uh this man walks by and he goes uh, father what time's the mass on april 3rd going to be so i was like oh, wow. Hey. wow this is awesome so you know he, he got to to see it and uh, wow that's cool yeah right. so that never happened to me before and i don't think uh, i remember john commenting on that that's never been a, a something that we would expect when we were going to different parks and checking things out. Um, but to have this man walk by and, and ask what time the mass was going to be on April 3rd was just like, all right. All you know, right. Wow. Take it there, so. Wait, and you weren't even wearing the iRace t-shirts from years before, right? No, no, yeah, I was in my collar, so that was the only thing. So that's, you know, he associated it all, I guess, with the iRace. Uh, uh. So I think this is, a, you know, we kind of take that as a good sign as, you know, this is, is something that's going to be hopefully big again, you know, and it's yeah. such yeah. a good event. You know, uh, if people haven't been to an outdoor Catholic mass, because let's face it, that doesn't happen with great regularity. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually quite a few restrictions on that. And the only person who can actually approve that is the bishop. And it's a good thing he's going to be there. Um, <laughs> the uh, it, That was the thing that re- really impressed me the first time I went. Um, and that and seeing just how many seminarians there were at that first mass I went to. Um, 
I always call it a it's my, it's one of my favorite ones to attend because I always attend as a photographer and it is a target rich environment. You have mm-hmm. you have we would have attendees uh, from all most of the high schools, if not all of the high schools, many of the elementary schools, uh, many of the parishes, families come out. Enor- I'm always happy to see enormous families, too, um, but big family, old and young alike and. It is a joyful event, and I'm happy to say uh, it has never been rained out. We have had we've had ones. We had one mass that was definitely in the rain, um, but it cleared by the time the the five k came around. But you know, everyone nobody took off. It was as well attended as any of the prior ones. They just broke out their umbrellas and enjoyed the mass and and did what they did. It was it was really wonderful. But the the seminary there's a ton of seminarians, mm-hmm. so so all the seminarians will be there. Um, they, you know, obviously they're all working the mass. There's a ton of priests. Um, it's a, it's always a fun thing to see during uh, communion. Uh, the priest will come out and they'll have a seminarian with them, and the seminarian uh, actually at at all times will have an umbrella over them because you have to cover the right. cover the Eucharist is going out. Uh, but it's just so adorable, like the whole <laughs> and everybody is so excited and it's so beautiful and and. You know, I will tell you, uh, for those of us who are of the hat-wearing types, don't don't forget that uh, for, for the fellows, you do have to take your hat off during parts of the Mass, which I was one time, I got a stern look from our Vicar General, because I had <laughs> put my hat on too early as I was taking photographs, and I get this glare, and I went, whoop, and I take the hat off, and he smiles. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a good like, thing you uh, can read each other's non-communication. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we yes. Were you wearing the Irish hat? The cap? No, I was had a baseball cap on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Quebec Nordiques, if you want to be specific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why I focus on the hat. I was just thinking about the hat for some reason. No, that's I, with the exception of that one cold or that one rainy day. That's the other and thing. It was cold that day. It was, it was a cold, rainy day, and still everybody came out, which is a credit to them. But with the exception of that one, it has always been on a warm, beautiful day. Uh, cool. Shorts and t shirts, and yeah, I know, yep. <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah. Um, it has always been fantastic. So it's it's really, you know, I, I we try to do this podcast every year when we have I race because I really want to encourage people to come to to let them know that it you know this is all right. I, I realize my our audience may not think this way, but there are those who might consider going to Sunday mass an onerous activity. You know, oh, I gotta go. It's <laughs> it's Sunday. I gotta go to mass. You know, there believe it or not, there are Catholics who think that way. I know it's a surprise to everybody. This is one of those things where it's a, it's a great opportunity to bring people with you who maybe hadn't been to Mass in a while. Right. Uh, because it's just so much fun. And it's free and you get a t-shirt. And there's a bunch of great food and entertainment and whatnot. And it's such a joyous occasion. But believe it or not, it's, it, there's also an, um, it's an evangelizing aspect to it. So if you have some – if you have a youth group – that you know, you're looking for a fun activity to do. Oh, that's a great you should bring idea. your youth group to the event. You know, particularly for Pope for people who may sometimes see the Catholic Church as somewhat cold. This is a very short of rain and, and a gray day. <laughs> this is a very non cold event. It's amazing to me just how w- wonderful it is. I was driving to work this morning, knowing that we we're going to be talking about this. And wondering, it's good for people of all ages because I was like, oh, maybe I invite my sister down and my nephew. My nephew's eight, and mm-hmm. I haven't seen him in a little while. Bring him. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's a good opportunity again just to live our faith in the public uh, square. You know, in a lot mm-hmm. of ways where we can kind of share, but also it's um, good music. So we'll have um, Mike Bedix will be playing um, from twelve to about twelve forty-five before the mass begins when mm-hmm. we have registration going on. And then uh, after the the mass, we'll have some more registration. Um, we'll have some time before the race starts at three. And then right after the the race and the walk finish, we have uh, Father Joe Daniel from Holy Child Parish, who's a DJ. Uh, he'll be, be yeah, he'll be spinning some records afterwards. What? And he's a great uh, yes, he's a great leader and 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 uh, a great DJ too. So he's one that gets people up, gets people moving, and we'll also have some, um, you know, some some games and things going on for the kids as well. Um, some opportunities again, just to get out and to to run around to burn off some energy. Yeah. Um, but it's a, a really fun, you know. The, the entire day, it flies by, you mm-hmm. know, and um, for us as, as seminarians, it was always tough because we would be there early in the morning to make sure everything was, was set up. And the seminarians do a lot of, of work and a lot of uh, dirty work in that mm-hmm. sense of raking up 
uh, goose boop and things like that <laughs> where they get <laughs> it ready. Um, because people will bring their own chairs and mm-hmm. um, they'll be able to sit. And uh, we're stationed right at the, uh, there's a little track um, and we're going to be right in the middle of that track. Um, so we're going to have some good opportunities just to, again, be uh, amongst other people, but also to be in the presence of our, our bishop who always is a great homilist and one that continues to um, yeah. uh, just impress, homilist. I think, so many people through through the words that he shares and encourages. And, uh, you know, that was something that I've seen. His encouragement has gone a long way in helping vocations do it because he loves vocations and loves our seminarians. So he knows our seminarians each as characters, and he can tell you definitely um, about each one. And I think that's another gift that our diocese has, a, a bishop that truly loves the seminarians and, and knows them, you know, yeah. and knows exactly who they are and um, the gifts that they can bring as well. Mm-hmm. You know, Father Adam, uh, I, I don't know if this has been done every year, but I know I've seen it some years. Is confession going to be on for this year? Yeah, we're, we're we're working on that. So we've got some replies from our the priests in their diocese, which again is another testament, um, the men that have reached out. Um, so we will have some opportunities from uh, 12 to about 12.45, again, for confessions um, before they get ready for Mass, and then they'll can celebrate and help to um, uh, with communion and, and everything um, during the Mass. So. That's the thing is you don't realize until you see it, uh, and Jen, you'll, you'll, you'll get this experience soon. There is something truly beautiful about people in a very public area having a very private moment with a priest. You know, it's all, all, mm. always off to the side, you know, at a distance. Sure. And people are very respectful and, and things like that. Um, but you'll see the priests offering confession. And it's, it's another one of those public acknowledgments of our faith that I don't think – you know, people necessarily think about, but here's an opportunity for you to go, you know, clean your soul for a little while right before Mass. Yeah, and if it's been a while, you know, the Holy Spirit puts us in those places and puts that on our heart that, you know, if we're, you know, and that's one of the great things too, if somebody is just at the park that day with Mm -hmm. without any knowledge who is Catholic and has been away, you know, again, it's a great opportunity for them to really start again, you know, of making that commitment and knowing that, um, Christ is there, you know, yeah. his mercy mm-hmm. and love is there um, and never leaves us. Um, and he's always calling us back. And I can, I think that's such a important part of it as well. Yeah. It's really, it's, I'm very excited for you, Jen, that you've, you're going to get to experience this for the first time. Uh, you'll also get to see one other kind of cool thing. Um, Carrie Janice, our beloved yep. fellow host of this show, mm-hmm. uh, she will be there and she will be working the event uh, on stilts. She has her on own stilts? on stilts. So Carrie uh, has an entertainment company all all to herself. One of her many side gigs. She is a she is a true hustler. This our our beloved Carrie. Yeah. And uh, she, one of her businesses is like event entertainment. So you know balloon making and all that kind of face stuff, painting. face painting and things. So she's got a whole crew that usually comes with her. Uh, but she herself is a stilt walker, and she will be towering over you by about ten feet. It's truly impressive. I cannot even begin to express how many skills are in this diocese that I am learning every day <laughs> that I am so excited about. We have Father Manuela making these amazing meals, and right. and hopefully more priests. And clergy doing that soon. We have stilt walking. Mm-hmm. We have DJing, mm-hmm. which I have just now learned. And Mike, you tell me this all the time. Get out of the office and go meet people more. Yeah. I am obviously missing a lot. I, I just want you to know, can you get somebody else to sub in next week for production of the <laughs> Catholic Star Herald? And I'm going to meet all of these characters. Uh, no. But oh. uh, I will, however, give you the opportunity any weekend you want to go out and meet any of these folks. No, it's it's true. Um, it's amazing. Well, this goes back to what I was saying before about how, you know, we're coming out of these COVID times and how important it is to actually go out and get out of the building, get out of your yeah. house, go out and meet people. Because it's it's important not to forget all these incredible skill sets that are around us. Now, you're you're not wrong. In this diocese, I have truly been impressed by the number of people who are multifaceted in their skills uh, and and so generous to volunteer their time yeah. or do it at, you know, cut rate cost or 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 what. Uh, and it does my heart good because I'm one of those people. I'm multi-talented with a number of different skills and they just have to say, "Hey, would you mind?" And yes whatever I can do let me let me know um, but it but it's a good thing you know and it's and so I hope our listeners will you know 
when someone comes to you in the, from the church and says, hey, would you, would you, have you ever, would you consider, would you be a part of, you know, say yes, because it's amazing so many wonderful people we're surrounded by. And it, you know how we always ask people to share their talents? Yeah. Apparently, any talent will do, including <laughs> stilt walking. Well, we'll finally, we will find a purpose for that talent. That's I'll what tell I you mean. That right it's, now. it's, yeah. I, I, you know, little known fact, I think maybe three people know this. I also can make balloon animals. Okay. Yeah. Well, the uh, problem is I can't blow up the balloon. <laughs> oh, that's not a problem anymore. No, 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 no. That's not a problem anymore. See, I ha- the blessing of having a kid is I go to a lot, or have been, not so much now, I was 14, uh, or almost 14, uh, going to all these different kid events, you now get a little pump. So they oh, put a little pump, and they okay. stick the thing on the end, you pump it up, and then it, you don't have to worry about your lung capacity that was any the only longer. Pro- regular balloons, no no problem. But those long, skinny balloons, mm-hmm. I, can, I don't know what it is about them. You know what? But I make a really mean balloon dog. Jan, your birthday's coming up. I will make sure that we get you a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> a balloon inflator for your birthday. Now, wait for my birthday because it's during the week. I don't want to wait till April third. You're saying this is going to happen in the office because my birthday's on a work day. Yeah, I know. Oh my goodness. The, the, the bigger question is whether I'm going to remember this once we leave the vault doors. But you know, oh yeah, yeah. For you, hey listeners, uh, could you all uh, remind me at some point that I need to get uh, Jen for her birthday a balloon inflator, or you know, just carry if you're listening to the podcast, can she borrow one or something like that? You need to drop one in her. But because uh, I want. I want to witness you make balloon animals oh, on goodness. your birthday. On my birthday. On your birthday. You know, there was one time, I'm gonna, this was when I was in college, and I remember my aunt, growing up in Texas, asked me what I wanted for my birthday. I think I was 20. And I was just being flip, and I said, I want a gorilla to come sing me happy birthday and peel a banana. And I, I, I don't know when I said that. Six months later, who knows? I am at work in the school newspaper, and <laughs> somebody... Dressed as a gorilla, came in and sang "Happy Birthday" and peeled nice. a banana. <laughs> oh man! Nice. So you have to watch what you say because people remember stuff. They really do. Which, by the way, was a big hit. By the way, you know, we often talk about our, you know, sort of in that vein. We often talk about our listeners contacting us. You actually can contact us. There's a number of different ways for any of you to contact us. But, but believe it or not, the podcast has its own email address. Whether or not I remember to check it is a different story. But it does have its own email address, and you can. And, uh, email us at any time if you want to pitch an idea or respond to something dumb I said or something smart Jen said. Uh, it's talking Catholic at Camden org. So feel free to use that at any time. That's talking Catholic at Camden org. And you can also, as always, comment on all of our social media pages as well Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We are talking Catholic on all of those platforms as well as our YouTubes. Uh, it's uh, YouTube. Uh, dot com slash uh, talking Catholic. So you can always reach out to us with ideas in, in any way you'd like. I or, hope you do. Or or complain. You know, one one or the other. <laughs> we're we're cool with that. We do. We'll, we'll take any comments. Yeah. The going back to iRace, however, um, in your experience of it, you know, you talked a little bit about how meaningful it was to have the the interaction. Um, has have there been any seminarians that have come in through the seminary program that have mentioned the, the importance of iRace or, or something they felt at iRace? Like it, maybe before they started the discernment process? Yeah, a lot of them will, will come kind of uh, just to hit, almost as a, a come and see, like, well, let me go see what this is about. Like somebody asks them. And that, you know, the big thing about a personal invitation from our priest or from the people in our diocese, you know, of seeing a young man that you know would be a good priest, you know, one that you would want to minister to your families or minister to your community, and just saying, why don't you come out to the iRace, you know, sign up, you know, camdenpriest.org, and uh, come out and just see what it's all about. And uh, so many, I think, are um, touched by it, you know, and um, it's something that is probably surprising um, at first because, you know, to see the great support and to see the great love um, of people that don't even know who you are personally, you know, they, they mm-hmm. could probably pick you out. Um, from seeing your picture and reading um, uh, reading the different blogs that our seminarians have written. Um, but they're not people that they would know firsthand. Um, but to see, again, people are praying for them by name, people are praying and offering things up for them, you know, is just a, a great gift from our diocese, from the people here. And just, again, to see that it's such a group effort, you know, that the men that enter never enter alone as they have the support of their family and community. Mm-hmm. Um, and they need that support and they need to see that there are people there that are, are praying for them and, and waiting for them eventually, if God wills it, to become priests um, so that they can serve in their community one day. 
That's a good reminder too that we do have the the, the blog online where where uh, parishioners and faithful can learn more about the seminarians. Where is that exactly? Uh, you can read that at. Uh, CamdenPriest.org, um, and also through our, our Facebook, and we're working on getting the new ones for the new year. Um, so we were we're slow in kind of getting things ready for this year, but uh, hopefully we'll be back up and running soon with uh, our seminarians sharing parts of their faith, parts of discernment, um, and they're all very gifted in, in the way that they write, in the way that they can tell their story or to mm-hmm. tell a story from the seminary. So I always enjoy reading it just because, again, it gives you a glimpse of my, my own past because a lot of the things they experience are things that I, I miss about the seminary, whether it's talking about the community, talking about classes, talking about uh, the spiritual life of discerning. And discerning and kind of figuring things out is always something that seems very daunting, too, where it's uh, something that we don't want to do. we rather know 100%, but... We know that's never the case, that as much as we think we know, um, there's always that little bit of uncertainty, and sure. the same for a married person, the same for someone who's entering religious life. And, uh, you know, it's a, a, such an exciting time where you're really depending on God, and that's the confidence that you see growing over your time in the seminary is depending that. I'm not going to be 100%, but God's going to take up that rest, that God's going to give me the things I need to overcome, that anxiety or that, that struggle that we um, may encounter. And the people, again, of our diocese play such a big part of that encouragement. And sometimes we need to hear that you're doing a good job, yes. you know, you, you're, you're doing the right thing, you're, we're praying for you, you know, and that's sometimes what really lifts you up because you do get weighed down by discernment, you do get weighed down by classes or things going on um, in our own lives or in the life of the, the seminary. So hearing those words and just hearing that encouragement. And I just came from our um, third graders at St. John Paul II Regional School who wrote letters. And we get a lot of letters from school kids that are Knights of Columbus sponsor. And they make sure that they're always reaching out. And to hear that from home, and our guys aren't far away. You know, they're in Seton Hall, which is about an hour and a half from here, maybe about two hours from some of the guys in the shore or Dunwoody up in uh, Yonkers, New York at St. Joseph's, which is about a little, probably another half hour. So probably two, two and a half hours. Um, but to hear those voices from home and to see again that support um, that people are, are praying for them, even though we're not seeing them on a regular basis, right. um, that we're still reaching out and still praying and, and hoping for them. And just to, just to add on to that, for, for those of you who remember um, Father Adam's predecessor, Father Michael Romano, I will tell you that he is very good about a, listening to this podcast and B, watching our live streams and just reading the Catholic Star Herald to stay abreast of what's going on. So it touches his heart as well to see all of you taking part in all of these these works that we do in the diocese. So if you love Father Romano, which all of us do, uh, and miss him like all of us do, you know, take a part in these things and, and let him see you because uh, it's, it's a, he's a wonderful guy and we want to support him too because he's he doesn't have any Camden people with him right now in, at the NAC, right? In yeah. North American College in Rome. But he will have an award named after him at the iRace. So I don't know if he knows that yet, oh, but that'll be... breaking uh, news. Wow. Yeah, so Spoiler. Be, uh, All right. You know, <laughs> we just got a scoop right here yeah, on the podcast. I love that. So he's, awesome. you know, as soon as he see, hears this, he'll probably turn immediately very red <laughs> oh. <laughs> as he's listening to this in Rome. But I also wanted to mention, too, and you mentioned how, how faithful he is to listening to the podcast and reading the Star Herald. We, we uh, received a picture, John Kalitz and I, of uh, him reading the uh, the Star Herald, and the ad was upside down. Oh! <laughs> and he said, "What's going on with this?" And uh, I put it all on John Kalitz, of course, of turning it upside down. Um, yes. Uh, and hopefully that worked, and, and catching some eyes, and it wasn't you know something that was an accident, but something that was done on purpose. So, well, any anybody complain? Anybody? Yeah, reach out? Uh, Jen. She, <laughs> she, she, we we literally no filters. It, it, there, have, I have had to pull rank maybe twice when with Jen since she came on as our our managing editor, and so the, John's plan was uh, for anyone who doesn't know, who doesn't read the Catholic Star Herald. Uh, John said, "Listen, I, we want to put in the ad for this year's iRace, race, but we want it to run upside." down because we want people we want it to draw attention and some of us were okay with the idea and some of us were reticent about the idea then some of us said not under over my dead body which was <laughs> Jen. <laughs> because Jen yeah. like a good journalist is a purist and wants the truth and doesn't like any of this cockamamie stuff um, so we had to make her do it but I will say I got a host of criticisms about it which tells me which is which is which is good yes. which is a good thing because people read it and were confused by it but it drew attention and 
and where we told everybody the same thing. John.Kalins at CamdenDiocese.org. <laughs> That's who you want to contact. And I'm still talking about it. I was actually talking about it yesterday, and John Kalitz said, you know, if you're still talking about it three weeks after it published, I have proven my point. And then I, if, if there was a mic drop at that point, he would have <laughs> dropped it and walked out. So. John John is uh, John is a very creative person and always willing to uh, turn over the apple cart to uh, make a point. And uh, to his credit, he was absolutely right. I was less reticent about it. I actually my criticism was that I thought it should have been someplace else in the paper where it would have been even more obvious. But uh, <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, it was work. So anybody, if anybody thought that that IRAs thing was a, a screw up, it wasn't. It was quite intentional. I'm glad that we got Father Romano, though, in on it. Yes, was, I would like good. to see that photo. That's a photo? I would love to see that photo. Actually, just the idea that that it's being read in Rome, I, I'm very moved by that, and yeah. I would love to see that. Yeah. We love you, Father Romano. <laughs> yes, Father Romano, please send a photo of you reading it again. <laughs> and Jen's not even met you. I know. That would be a good thing, you know, get to wherever you're at. Yeah. You know, yeah. people bring the Star Herald, you mm-hmm. can say, like, you know, here I am in Rome. Or You know what? We really should do that. You know, hey, Father Romano, get on that. Uh, uh, we want a picture of you. <laughs> And uh, I was Pope actually, Francis too, if you can get a copy. So we, we talked about this. I would, yeah, if you can get one to Pope Francis. Okay. Did you- yes. Like my mouth is hanging open <laughs> at that good. amazing like, idea right to now. See them sitting together, you know, like it really was. Cappuccino. Was- and- yeah. And make sure you get the cappuccinos, the espressos in there, actually. <laughs> the espresso, that's yes. What I'm- the, uh, that's so funny. You know, he, I really want to see fa- that now. Fa- <laughs> Father, actually, Father Romano, uh, it kind of did us wrong at one point about I race. And so he was, he was, he had, he had so he's the admin, the admission, admin, oh, director man. of admission. Thank you. He's did you want to pronounce admissions. Father Adam's last name instead? <laughs> Jaheski, I can do it. Admissions apparently I have a problem with. He's the director of admissions at the Pontifical North American College in Rome. And, uh, uh, the bishop and Father Hughes and a delegation from the diocese and actually from this region of, of bishops was over there a couple of years ago uh, to make a presentation to the uh, – there. every five years they have to go over and make a presentation to the pope. Anyway, um, the Father Romano, as a priest of Camden, was invited along, and it was right around Thanksgiving, and Father Romano took it upon himself to present to the pope – uh, the 5K run that the seminary was doing. It was their turkey trot. It was, uh, oh. and I uh, presented the Pope with a with a T-shirt for for that. And my first thought when I thought that was, where's the iRace T-shirt? Oh. Why well, don't give them the thing for the, the knack? Give them the thing for iRace. Right. So I'm still. We need to mail them one, I guess. That's a good. I, you know what? Mail I think you're two. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mail. Yeah. Excellent point, Father. Right. Father Romano, the next time you see the bishop, or the, yeah, the Bishop of Rome, we want you to, uh, we're going to send you a t-shirt and you got to give the iRace t-shirt to him, all right? Please. We, we could also send a volunteer one in case Pope does want to come back. And you know what? Volunteer. That's a good point. That's an excellent point. There you go. <laughs> but maybe we can very... get one that just says Pope on the back. <gasps> nice. Let's make that happen. Yes. John, and we need another t-shirt. We do. The uh, You know, I, I was supposed to be in Rome. Mm. Uh, like five days ago, six days ago, and uh, <laughs> I would have happily, and it, we were going to have a, a some. We were going to be close to the the Pope. I absolutely would have brought an I race T shirt over with me and see if I could have thrown it at him while he was driving <laughs> driving by his Pope mobile. There's another photo <laughs> op, just a T shirt hitting the side of a Pope. Mobile. As, as they handcuff Mike Wall, yeah. that's another good photo. Another good op, photo. Though. Would you read the, the Herald while you get handcuffed? That's right. That's right. <laughs> what I will do, whatever is necessary for the church and the diocese of Camden. So dedicated. <laughs> we haven't seen Mike in a couple months. Oh, don't worry, he's still in Rome. He's got great reading. <laughs> material though right. we're sending it over daily <laughs> he's editing from Rome you could be the at large editor there so that would be a good good title well, hopefully Father Romano would visit me at least um, anyway anyway can we go back to Iris for a second I'm I mean too. like legitimately yes. <laughs> not the uh, throwing <laughs> a t-shirt at Pope you did say something about jocularity earlier I so did I want to make sure we come through when we were, you were talking about discernment, and we've been talking a lot about the seminarians. Um, I've looked at old photos, obviously, you know, getting ready and getting excited about it. I've seen a lot of the religious women there as well. Um, is this something that women who are maybe considering the religious life can talk to the religious women that are there? Yeah, definitely. With the representatives that are there, it's always a good opportunity, and you know that's what we always encourage for the men. You know, to talk to your parish priest, uh, your pastors. Um, but for the women, too, to talk to any religious sister and usually seeing someone 
someone and a habit is like a, a magnet, you mm. know, where they get yeah. a lot of yeah. people that come up. And I think this is a good opportunity just, to, again, to talk to them about their own discernment. And it's something that uh, is special and something that they would enjoy speaking about. And that's always something that, you know, touches my heart when someone says, what was your journey like? And I say, well, how much time do you have? Because <laughs> um, we'll be here a while. Um, but when someone does ask you, that is such a, you know, just a, a special question and one um, that's very heartfelt and just one that you want to respond to and kind of uh, hopefully help them in, in their own discernment because you never know really where they're at. You know, they might be discerning maybe married life or they might be on the fence with things. Um, so our opportunity just to share our, our story and our journey is, you know, a good, a good moment for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have to give the the religious communities a lot of credit. Uh, there's always a good showing. Like we, we have, we have a few different Franciscan communities who uh, who always make sure they're there. We have the CFRs that always come up. Um, I think uh, I think we have a couple of Filipinis that uh, come every year. So it's a nice it's a nice turnout of women religious. And uh, the CFRs are always good about uh, if if it's in session, they bring up their St. Michael's. Um, uh, the, I forget what they're referred to as, but um, a group of women that are discerning and living oh, in the yep. convent oh, in Atlantic City. The missionary, mm-hmm. St. Michael's Missionaries. Yeah. Why I cannot remember that name, I do not know. Uh, but they're always good about coming, and they're these wonderful young women who are discern, in, you know, in the discernment process. And, oh, my goodness, every time you're around them, you're just like, oh, life is good. Yeah, the, the world is okay. One of the conflicts, they actually have their Samuel group. That day, what so the Samuel. heck oh, is going on with this oh, race this year? All these things so, that I remember so beautifully, yeah, this conflict. Yeah, so it's going to be different. Different, but it's uh, again. It was just a lot of things going on, and we were looking at different dates. Um, so they're praying for us. They're praying for good weather, as hopefully everybody is. So whether you're going or not, please take a time to <laughs> offer that prayer for a nice sunny day. Um, the last thing we need is, is rain, yeah, um, because that would just right. kind of like put the. Uh, the, the, the crown, I guess, on my uh, my tenure as vocation director. Right. As soon as Aww. I came in, it shut down. And then as soon as we have it, if it rains, that would just kind of confirm Oh, yeah, it's going to be everything. your fault. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> Not a problem. The uh, Anything that goes wrong, Father, because everything went, because when Father Romano was here, everything went perfectly. It was a well machine. So, I'm just saying. Uh, but, you know, we talked about this earlier. You know, we we are blessed to have, God willing, five, uh, five seminarians mm-hmm. getting ordained this year. Um, but that comes at a cost. So that means that our seminarian ranks are going to be a little diminished uh, mm-hmm. for a little while. So it is actually going to be a couple of years before we we ordain a, a couple more priests. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also means that there's a lot of opportunity right now for a new seminarians and some, some spots for us to fill. So, you know, one of the complaints we get from time to time in my work, because I get most of the complaints, I'm like the complaint office, Um <laughs> You know, we'll hear from different communities and they'll say, well, why don't we have any Puerto Rican priests or why don't we have any black priests or why don't we have any Italian priests or why don't we, you know, I'm like, or why don't we have any priests from Salem County or Cumberland County? And we're like, well, we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. You know, the home is the is the place where a lot of these people have to be encouraged. It it is, you know, there's there's no way to sugarcoat this. Uh, We have a lack of black priests, African-American priests in South Jersey. We have a lot of African priests, um, but we don't have any African-American priests. And that, you know, we have to encourage people from that community to come forward and and, you know, hear that call if it's if they're being called to it uh to to join the seminarian process remember just becoming a seminarian isn't you know it's not you can you can opt out but if you're considering it why not go start the process you know it's a it's a long process and that length is important you know it's it's a discernment process to let you know whether or not maybe this is what you should be doing or not but it's not a it's not a sentence right. so if you start the seminary process and you find that it's not for you, well, you know what? And this is something Father Adam and Father Romano have both said to me. That means the Catholic Church is getting a great Catholic gentleman. But if you go through the process, it means you're getting a great priest. Um, so if you have any hesitations, talk to somebody. Talk to Father Adam. He's very nice. So nice. Very accommodating. You uh, don't even have to know his last name. No, you really don't. Father Adam is really enough. Don't don't fret about Chehesky. Um, but it's it's something you should really consider. And if you're if you're a community who feels like they're underrepresented in the priesthood, 
Um, I don't mean this to sound like it's on you. Um, however, you do have a very important role in this. And if you are encouraging people, young men in your and young women, if, if they're interested in religious life, to go forward and, and discern that process, you have to ask them to do it, you know? So anyway, well, Father Adam, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the event is I Race for Vocations. It starts at noon on April 3rd at Cooper River Park, and we ask you to register at, it's free, but we ask you to register at camdenpriest.org. And right? free picnic afterwards, and a free, free picnic. family picnic. So come out and enjoy uh, some good good tunes afterwards with Father Daniel and uh, enjoy some good food and some fellowship with uh, everybody from the diocese and especially our seminarians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. We are. Well, thank you both. And to our listeners, thank you. And we'll talk to you again next week. See you, everybody.